Welcome back. Gauteng's youngsters spent youth day queuing for the chance of a job within provincial government departments. These jobs fall under the Nasi Ispani project and will be permanent. South Africa's unemployment rate is among the highest in the world. And the youth continue to bear the burden of the joblessness. The Gauteng Provincial Government's Jobs Fair is an effort to address unemployment in the province. And for more, I'm joined by Gauteng Premier Panyazala Sufi. Premier, thank you so much. After a very busy day for joining us here. <laughs> thank you so much. Yeah. So I had a look at the, the download booklet yeah. of this Nasi Ispani um, project or campaign. And I was absolutely struck by the numbers. So Gauteng is a youthful province. 30 percent that's 5.8 million of our country's young people reside in Gauteng yeah. and approximately 2.2 million of those young people in Gauteng are unemployed but yet Gauteng is the, the country's economic yeah. hub this is where thousands of people across the country young and old flock yeah. to get jobs so exciting news for young people that they have access to these positions yeah. um, how many positions are there and importantly were they existing positions that have now been sort of ring-fenced for the youth or have they been created? No, thank you so much. Thank you for the opportunity. Actually, you are correct. Uh, if you can't address uh, unemployment, uh, we're all doomed, uh, especially uh, when it affects young people because they're the future. Uh, they're the ones that have to develop uh, this country in terms of infrastructure, uh, social economic um, uh, <clears throat> facilities and many other things. But reality is that they are going through difficulties and uh, we, we are repositioned our mandate and to identify unemployment as an area where we need to intervene and uh, we are quite excited that we identified all funded posts uh, within government so it means they are funded they are permanent they are not uh, ad hoc and on the basis of that to advertise them uh, so far we went out uh, with almost 7,000 uh, the intention is to uh, increase that figure um, uh, uh, almost uh, every month until we are satisfied that we have made a dent to unemployment. Right. So once again, how are these positions there? Because, you know, we know that there are positions within government that need yeah. to be filled. We, we know, for instance, of 2,000 nursing positions that need yeah. to be filled. Are these some of those positions that have been allocated to the youth? or Because unemployment can't just suddenly be addressed by creating yeah. positions that aren't essential to government? Well, you are right, um, but it's also to reposition government. Uh, in the last 29 years, government was on policy formulation, uh, formulation of laws. Uh, we've passed that stage. You've got enough laws, now you've got enough policies. We need to migrate to implementation. And some of the policy positions or positions that were meant to establish laws, uh, we are converting them into uh, actual implementation uh, post so it's service delivery related post but it's a mixture uh, people resign people also reach uh, uh, old age and others decide not to continue to work with us so we have identified posts that were there that were not were, that were not utilized and uh, we just consolidated them from various government departments and government agencies and we're proud that uh, young people came in there thousands you know I'm, 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 I'm honestly touched by uh, uh, the dedication, the commitment for them to stand on those long queues uh, so that they can lay their hand on these jobs. And we want to commit uh, uh, to them and uh, society that this was not a fly-by-night exercise. We mean it. And uh, now that we've got this massive, massive, I mean, when I left the office, the CVs were just massive. Uh, we've got a database. We know who's unemployed in Gauteng and we'll be in a position to intervene and give them the relief that they need. Amidst this this situation we've got to balance the unemployment rate and the need yep. the dire need to create and to give jobs to young people yep. with the public sector wage bill which yep. we know is already challenging for government so how are these positions being funded are the funds already there and how much is it costing yeah they're funded post uh, <clears throat> I'm of, I'm of the strong view I think uh, I really believe that government should lead uh, if, if we have the challenges of COVID where many people lost their jobs, you can't just say private sector alone uh, must play a role. Uh, you can't just say SMMEs alone must play a role. Uh, you can also rely only on uh, government-owned institutions, government on its own, because it can provide sustainable and long-term uh, position. Obviously, we need to balance. Um, 
Uh, when we started this process, uh, we identified almost 16,000 uh, uh, vacant posts and uh, we came down to 13,000. Um, but we felt that we can't be that reckless as well and just fill all of them. Uh, we need to be sure that indeed they are going to assist service delivery it's sustainable. and sustainable as well. So we've gone through that exercise. I, I just want to assure you, okay. you're just not... So the other thing is, in terms of sustainability, this is not a once-off yeah. exercise. This is something that you're going to be addressing yeah. continuously. It's not just yeah. for this year. Yeah. Okay. No, we've got... Uh, our target is that we, we need to... Uh, and, and I want to thank the private sector and other institutions. We intend to advertise 6,000 new posts every month uh, up until the end of July. Uh, All within government? Uh, not within government. There are others that, uh, for example, we've got a solar uh, panel installations where people that are going to be trained to install uh, solars. We've got almost 25,000 posts uh, that are available for that task so that they can go to the house of the indigent and uh, uh, install solar. We've got 6,000 that we're preparing that must go and fill up uh, uh, potholes and cut grass on highways and that is in partnership uh, with other state-owned institutions so we, we we will partner with some institutions but where we feel we've got the capability and the capacity and the resources as a state we'll do that uh, on our own okay and so these positions are for a variety of jobs cleaners drivers receptionists, artisans security officers media public relations mm -hmm. officers cfos medical officers so it's from unskilled all the way right through yes. to qualified positions um, and you, you told me before we, we went on air that you had 17 active sites today yeah. Yeah. and I can and only imagine thousands yeah. of young people yeah. rocking up which is positive it's, pos it's mixed I must be honest um, uh, I saw uh, we, we always speak about uh, unemployment in terms of statistics today we physically uh, touched those statistics. You saw uh, people's faces. And I people saw people's faces. faces the disparation, the plea to government. No, I, I, I was touched. I was emotionally, emotionally drained, to be quite frank. Uh, and I, I really feel it's a, it's, it's, it's a time bomb that is going to explode on our face and uh, we'll, we'll not have answers for it. So we are making our own contribution. We are calling on everyone, the private sector, if you've got posts that are funded. Uh, please fill them, national government, local authorities, and any institutions, because those numbers are, are unsustainable. They are massive, I can tell you. Uh, I mean, in one site, in Nazarek, uh, before we went to Tembisa, Katlewung, and later on, uh, uh, Zakani, uh, average, we've got 7,000 people that are queuing at one site uh, for almost 7,000 posts. So it means mm. that site alone can accommodate uh, uh, the vacant post. But We've got many other posts, so we'll use it as a database mm. uh, so that we don't have to go back and ask people to apply. Mm. Now that they've applied, we know their needs. We'll categorize them and give them those particular jobs. But we are calling upon yeah. everyone uh, who has an opportunity to create jobs that we have to do this and move with speed because those young people can't forever be there starving without jobs. In any um, attempt to achieve positive goals. Yep. There will be challenges Definitely. and there will be naysayers. Definitely. Um, in the queues today, some of the young people uh, expressed mm. hesitance. They, they asked, is this an attempt to buy votes ahead of next year's elections? Uh, there were EFF members at some of these sites saying, well, how, why is Panyaza Lasufi's office uh, taking government jobs and, and using them to the benefit of the ANC to generate media interest around that. What is your response to that? Well, as you say, there will be naysayers everywhere. Uh, but do you suspend government because there are elections next year? Just imagine you say we are closing government. Uh, there are no clinics, there are no hospitals, there are no schools because there are elections the next year. It doesn't make sense. But the same people who I complain about electioneering and the one that you say young people need jobs, young people need opportunities. So you do it, you are damned, you don't, you are damned. And these are the same people that say uh, uh, this government is doing nothing. So if government responds and listens to you when you say we need these opportunities, then uh, we are accused. Why are you responding now? Uh, and any moment when you respond, it will be. And I always tell people elections happen every six months in our country. Uh, every six months there are by-elections, local government elections, national government elections. So 
our, our, our country, fortunately, uh, has this method of elections that we have uh, all the time. So I, I really, I'm, 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 I'm not keen. Uh, politically... This even, year's, hmm? next year's elections, rather, are slightly different because I, the tension seems to be building in the sense that South Africa is, many people say, heading towards a turning point where things are... It's sort of a make or break election and, you know, whether you buy into that or not, I think it's very important while we're talking to you and while we're talking on Youth Day about issues very pertinent to youth, perhaps if you have a message for the youth about the importance of getting involved, because as many young people as there are without jobs, there are young people despondent, wondering what's the point of voting? Well... <laughs> I'm not, my mind is not even on elections. Uh, I'm genuine when I say if we can't tackle the high number of young people that are unemployed, that's the end of us. Fortunately, I come from the skills environment of education. Um, if you can't equip our children and our young people with skills, uh, we are all doomed. Um, whether they register to vote or not register to vote or they're mobilized to vote or not mobilized to vote. The reality is that the world is not waiting for us. The world is moving without us. So our young people need to compete. Our young people need to ensure that they've got the necessary skills. And you can't replace that uh, with short-term jobs. You need people to be skilled so that they can really be creative and uh, innovative so that they can survive. But obviously, democracy needs to, uh, to be active, democracy needs to be supported, and young people are key and crucial. Uh, but I, I, I'm, I'm not in that space where you say either these elections are crucial or the, the other elections. I mean, even when COPE was established, people said uh, these elections at that time were crucial. When EFF was established, people said this election were do or die. So people will continue uh, to, 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 to throw uh, that particular task. But what we need is genuinely protect our young people. They are the future, and any country that can protect its young people doesn't deserve to exist at all. Okay. Last question quickly. I know you've given us a number of figures. Just to, to remind our viewers at home, if there are young people out there, how many positions are up for grabs, and where can they go electronically to find more information? Yeah, they, we, we put up almost 7,000 posts, and uh, we're asking people to go on our website, uh, uh, it's https uh, uh, jobs, uh, .gov uh, but they can go to the Houting Provincial Government website, there are links there, uh, they can be. Uh, the jobs are open until the 14th of July, so uh, it's not first come, first serve, so whoever applies, as long as they've got okay. the necessary qualifications and, and the and skills that are Sorry, but with all these thousands of CVs you've received just today, yep. I'm assuming you've got a massive team of staff yeah. to go through all of those CVs to Fortunately, find Fortunately, the they're not going to the same port, so because they're then separated by departments. At least we can in a position to push them. So the 14th of July is, uh, is a deadline. And we intend to uh, uh, fill them as early as August uh, so that we can be in a position to give people an opportunity to get a job. Excellent. Thank you so much on Youth Day for coming to speak to us, Hunting Premier Panyazala so Sufi. Uh, if you're watching, if you are unemployed, if you are young, head over to houtingjobs.gov.za. There are 7,000 positions up for grabs. Uh, and make sure you get your application in before the 14th of July.